Hello everybody and welcome back to our timer service tutorial series. So a tutorial series where we are building a timer service using Spring Boot and the Quads library. In the previous videos we have set everything up, created some jobs which we can execute and run them and that's about it. So basically we can't do much. In this video we would like to try and to see how we can actually query those jobs. So for example, when you start our hello world job that we can see here, and let's say that it runs for uh, quite some time, how can you fetch it or how can you check if it's running and get some information about it? So that's something that we are going to be implementing today. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a method in our scheduler service, uh, which is looking for all of the jobs. So let's uh, prepare the method first. So here we have our method and as you can see it will be returning a list of timer infos. So the timer info if we jump to it it's our um, DTO class which contains all of the necessary information about our timer. So this is what we are going to be returning and we are returning a list because uh, later on you can have multiple jobs so not just our hello world job you can have multiple of them and we would like to get all of the infos for them. So um, let's see how we can fetch this. To fetch the jobs that we have, um, you can use a group name. So for example, when you're creating a job, it can belong to a certain group. So imagine that you have, um, I don't know, a couple of jobs, different ones, and some are database related, some are related to some other part of your application, and you want to split them into a group. So you could have in the name of the job, you could have something like database dot blah, blah, whatever is the ID of your timer. And then you can say, okay, fetch me only database jobs or fetch me only this kind of job. So based on the group, in our case, the group is just the default one and we don't actually really care about it. So we just want to fetch all of the running timers. So to do that, there is something in called group matcher, which can, you can say, uh, I want any group. So when you're fetching from the scheduler class, you can say, yeah, please give me all of the timers with any group. So that it doesn't matter which group it is. So let's see how we can do that. And here you can see it. So we are using the scheduler class. So the one that we are auto wiring here and that we use to schedule our jobs, we are saying uh, that we want to get the job keys. And with the job keys, you can provide in the group name, which I mentioned, and we are using the group matcher saying, yeah, get me any group. And here now, this will return all of the job keys that we have. And with the job key, then you can uh, target the job. So for example, if we jump to our hello world um, job here, you can see that we have been using this um, simple name of this class. So this is our ID. This is the the job key that we are using. So just keep that in mind for the later implementation. So let's take a look at how we can iterate through these job keys and how can we fetch, fetch information about the specific key. So I'm going to implement the method and then we are going to go through it and I will explain more in detail what exactly is happening. And here we have it. So here what we did is we said, okay, get me all of the job keys based on this uh, group matcher. So we are getting the job keys with all of the uh, groups or any group and we are streaming to them and then we are mapping. So we are taking the job key and with the job key, we are mapping the information from the job detail uh, that's in the job data map. And that's our timer info. We are mapping that, filtering the not nulls so we're only interested in ones which are not null and we are collecting them to a list and returning it here. You can uh, maybe remember that something like this happened in the hello world job where we got the job data map and then based on the key or on the, this string, we got the timer info. So this is exactly the same thing that we are getting here. So we have this job data map and from the job data map, 
uh, with this key name, which is basically the name that we give it uh, when we are creating a job, so when we are building it. In our case, it's just uh, uh, the class name, so the simple name of the class, hello world job, and we are fetching with that and just returning it. If you would have multiple jobs, it again would work the same regardless what key is. If it's stored within the scheduler, you can just fetch it like this. Uh, let's just make this final. And now with this method, we are basically done inside of this. We can go back to the um, our other services. So for example, from the playground service and the playground controller to actually return this. So let's uh, take a look at what we can do in the playground service. We're going to add a method here, which can call the scheduler and fetch it. As you can see, it's really simple. It's just calling the scheduler, uh, the method that we just created. Now let's go back to the controller and uh, add an endpoint so that we can fetch the running timers. Again, really simple. We are just calling the service and getting all of the running timers. Let's now start our application and let's see how we can fetch it. I'll open the postman and then with the postman we are going to be calling this endpoint that we just created. So let's do that. So here in the postman I have already the endpoint which we used to uh, run our hello world job. So I'm going to just add a new one which will be similar. So it I can just uh, copy paste this part here and just remove this. So it's on the slash API slash timer. This is how we fetch all of our uh, running timers and you can see it's a, a get request. So let's start our job. So I'm starting now the hello world job and it's currently executing. If I send this, yeah, as you can see, I get a list with some uh, information here, which is the all of the timer info for the hello world job. And now that if you look at back into IntelliJ, you can see that the execution of the hello world job has stopped. If we would fetch this, we should get just an empty list. So let's do that. And as you can see, we are returning back just an empty list. Great. So we already have a method which can get us all of the running timers. Let's now implement one where we can fetch a running timer. So a single one based on the ID that we forwarded. So let's start now from the controller back to the playground service and then to the scheduler service to create all of this. And as you can see in our controller, we are creating a get mapping. So our get uh, request will be on this endpoint, which will be just uh, API timer slash timer ID. So the ID that we pass in, and we are calling the service with the get running timer method, which is still not implemented. So we have to implement that. So let's jump to our playground service. In the playground service, it's exactly the same thing as before. We are just calling the scheduler with the timer ID this time. And we, instead of a list, we are returning a single timer info DTO. So let's go to the scheduler and implement the important part. And now in the scheduler, we have our get running timer method and we have the timer info. Actually, I renamed this, I have to go back. It's the timer ID, so it's not the timer info. So let's just change the name here. Yeah. And now with this timer ID, we are going to fetch the timer info. I'm going to implement the method now and then I will explain what exactly am I doing here. And that's about it. As you can see, it's quite similar to what we have here. We are calling the scheduler to get the job detail with some job key. But now we don't have to iterate through anything. We already know about our time already. So we can just use that to fetch the job detail. And then from the job detail in the job data map, we can just get uh, the timer info object based on the timer ID, which we already have, or we could have just created a new instance of the job key and then use the job key name, same as here. But yeah, it doesn't really matter as we already have it. That's about it. The other, the other solution to this would be uh, to basically fetch all of them and then iterate through them and just filter out the one that we need. But this is, I guess, more performant because why would we have to fetch all of the 
um, running timers. So let's restart our application and then try to call this new endpoint that we created. So let's go back to the postman and let's create a new um, new request here. So we're going to copy paste this and now slash and something. So a timer ID. Let's try with something that doesn't exist. So like one, two, three. If we send this, we get an error, which is interesting. So let's go back and see what it's complaining about. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we got a null pointer exception at this place because the job detail is null. So we have to add a check for that. So if the job detail is null, we just return null. Now we have to restart our application again and hopefully now everything will work. So it started. Let's send this request again. And as you can see, we don't get anything because the timer with this ID does not exist. But we are creating a timer with the ID, which is hello world job. So let's try to call something with that. If we send this, we should again not get anything because this is not running. So this job is not running. We have to start it first. So we're only getting the jobs that are currently running. So we have sent it, it's running. And if we fetch it, as you can see, we get back the result, a single one, and this endpoint returns the list. Perfect. We have implemented what we wanted. So we have a way to fetch all of the timers and we have a way to fetch a single timer. In the next video, we are going to take a look at how we can update these timers and how we can actually delete them. So stick for that. And if you have any questions, do let me know and I will try to answer them. Until then, uh, please do like a video if you like it and subscribe to my channel for new and exciting tutorials. So I will see you in the next one.